Father, we are aware that there are so many different hearts watching those pictures. So many different hearts feeling what might have been. Singles feeling what might have been. Those who can't conceive feeling what might have been. Those who lost their babies feeling what might have been. So we're not unaware, Lord, that Sanctity of Life Sunday is a painful Sunday. Abortion is a horrible and painful thing, and just to draw attention to babies is painful, let alone the killing of babies. And then there are people in these three services, these three campuses right now, who've had abortions. There are boyfriends who've pressured for abortions, and husbands and grandparents who've pressured for abortions. And they don't want to hear what I have to say. Or they do, and they don't. So, Father, I pray that you would come now and do this amazing work. This psalm is not one thing. It is many things. Because there are many ears and many hearts here. Help me to be faithful to the psalm. And then you do the many works that need to be done. I pray through Christ. Amen. Psalm 106 is a summary of the history of Israel with a focus on her sins, her repeated sins, and God's anger and the judgment, and the cry for mercy, and the deliverance, and the praise, and then more sin, and then more anger, and then more judgment, and then more cries for mercy, and then more deliverance, and more praise, and, and then some more sin. And Have you ever read the Old Testament? It's awful! If you stop at the end of the Old Testament, it's not finished. It just pleads for more. You come to the end of this Psalm 47 and 48. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations that we may give thanks to Your holy name and glory in Your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. We heard that before. I can just hear. We've heard that before. Followed by sin. Again and again and again and again in the Old Testament. Pictures of ourselves. <laughs> One of the women praying downstairs before the service. When we referred to sin in one of the prayers, she she whispered, thank you for being the God of the second chance. And I whispered, third, fourth, 490th. He did save them over and over again. So the, the end of this psalm seems to me to be like the end of the Old Testament. Psalm sums up the Old Testament, walking us through a good hunk of it, showing how they failed again and again, and God was merciful again and again. Which is why there's a New Testament. If you just took the Old Testament, no Messiah yet. Failure, mercy, failure, mercy, Will this just go on, this cycle of failure, just go on forever? Or will there be something decisive in the future? And, and we Christians believe it was Jesus. Jesus was 
the Messiah. He came. The final, lasting, decisive act of God in salvation came into history with Jesus Christ. He was the final Adam. He was the final prophet like Moses. He was the final expression of Israel. He was the final high priest. He was the final Passover lamb. He was the final manna from heaven. He was the final suffering servant. He was the final son of man. He was, his blood was the final decisive purchase of the new covenant in which things would be written on our heart. Not just on stone. And he was the final and decisive yes and amen to all the promises of God. That's the New Testament. That's why we're Christians. So whenever I read a a text in the Old Testament that feels incomplete, like Psalm 106 does to me, I, I read it as though And this is the way I do believe God intended to be read. It's because He could see all this that was coming. I read it as though the incompleteness of it is precisely designed to send me straight to Jesus. That's why the Old Testament feels the way it feels. It's it's telling us it's not here yet. It's not complete yet. The work's not done yet. The sacrifices aren't enough. The law is not enough. It's all saying, He's coming, He's coming. And we're supposed to be on our tiptoes until He comes. And when He comes, and He did come, then we should read it with tremendous gratitude that what we see in these glorious words of mercy are now here in Jesus. So, I don't want you to hear this the way it might have been only heard the first time. I want you to be people who are on the other side of the Messiah and His coming so that yes, you hear it the way they heard it, full of mercy, full of grace, not knowing how it could possibly be. And now we know. He bought it with His blood. Verse 47, Save us. O Lord our God. Means to them, I think. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, rescue us from captivity now and every other captivity we ever get into. Hasten the day of the coming of the King. Deliver us once from all, from our worst enemies. Make atonement somehow, finally and decisively, not just in these bulls and goats for our sins. Write the law on our hearts that we may fear you forever. Never fall away from you again. I think that's what a true saint meant at the end of this psalm. He knew as things stood right there, not enough. Now we, when we read it, we know how. How that all, the King has come and the law has been written on our hearts and the Spirit has come and God is keeping His people for Himself and the decisive works of redemption are behind us and the consummation is in front of us with a great certainty. So, let's wave a banner over Psalm 106 with its horrors and its failures that are so relevant to this moment in history. Let's wave the banner of Jesus Christ, final Savior of the world, died for sins, conquered guilt, condemnation, hell, death. Wave that banner high over this psalm. And so when when you get to the text, save me, O Lord my God, mean the full meaning of the Lord God Jesus Christ. Flying over the banner, flying over the text is a a flag that's crimson colored because the blood of Christ has bought the mercy 